Hello and welcome to day 10 of Advent of Code 2023. In this video, I'm going to provide my solution around the problem while explaining the problem itself. So let's go and see what the problem is about. We have a map like this and it consists of a loop that we need to figure this out. There are a bunch of characters here. Let me make it a bit bigger. These ones are the empty cells or empty tiles, so to say. This means that it, it's a tile that has a path that goes from bottom and to the right. This is a tile that goes from left to right. This is a tile that has a path from top to bottom and so forth and so on. The explanation for all the tiles are written here. The S is the starting point which means it works like a cross. So it has four paths to top, left, bottom, and right. All the other tiles have only two, and this dot has no path altogether. If we look at this example, we can see that if we start at S, we can only go to right or go to the bottom. And then from bottom, we will continue bottom. We get to this point. We go to bottom and to the right, and here we go from the left to the right. Here we go from the left to top, here bottom to top, here bottom to left, right to left, and left to the start point. So there, there is a closed circuit here. Now if we go to a more complex one, so for example this one, we can see that we can start at S. We can either go to the right because there is a J here, which means that we could go like this, or we can go down and go here. Both are the same. It doesn't make any difference which one we choose. For example, we choose the button. We go bottom, then we go bottom and right, right and top, top and right, then right, right. We get to here. We go right and top and we continue until we get to S. Now, the thing that the puzzle wants us to solve is to find the tile that is furthest away from us and find how many steps we take from starting point to that point. In other words, we need to go from the start point and go through the map and get to the start point again and then divide the steps that we came through by two. That will give us the steps that we need to go from here to here. Okay, so let's go and see the code. Uh, let's make it a bit bigger. Oh, by the way, the code is, as always, available on GitHub. So if you want to go and check there, please do that. In the beginning, I just get the input and then divide it by new lines to get the different lines. And then I would figure out where uh, where is the starting point. So that is done by this function here. I just loop through each of the rows and each of the cells and find the um, cell that has the value of s and then we'll return it. Then based on the starting point and the neighbors that that starting point has I would select one of the two possibilities. So let's go back here. Uh, let me find one of these examples. For, so for this one we cannot go to the left because there is nothing in the left. We cannot go to the top because it's a dot and it's an empty cell. So the only possibilities that I have are either to the right or to the bottom. So here, using the select path, I will check that if the one on the bottom is either a pipe or is a L shape or is a J shape, I can from start go down. So it can be a Path. I will select that and I don't care about the rest of the neighbors. The same goes here. Uh, I can remove this part. This is not needed. Here I would look at up. If I can go up, if there is a pipe, if there is a F, which means that I can go up and to the right, or if there is a 7, which means that up to the left. If that is possible and we have already passed this one, I can go to north. I don't care about the rest, I choose north and return. And I say, okay, I am going north and these are my next tile position, so to say. Otherwise, we can go to east and west. I would choose east, it would work with west as well. 
and I will provide this. So this is just selecting the next step for me. Now I have the direction that I want to go, the next step and the current step. I would add these two to the path and then go to the steps. I have moved from start to this position, so my step will be one. Now, until I'm not getting to the end, which means that X is not this or Y is not this, we need to loop inside the path and find the next step. So there will be a candidate step from the position that we already in. So now if I am, for example, here at this point of the map, and I'm entering from top, I can only go down. So I need to check what tile I am in and which way I came. And based on those two, I can figure out which way I can go in the next step. So another example, if I am here and if I'm entering from bottom or south, I can only go to east. That is basically solved here. After the while, I would have a candidate X and candidate Y, which, was, which means the next step that I want to go. Then instead of doing a bunch of if, I created a string literal here that is input at that position and the direction. And this goes like this. If the current point is a pipe and we are going south, the next cell is one below or one to the south. The same goes around for all the other cases here. Uh, they are just the same. In the end, if candidate is candidate Y is one, which means that we go south and the rest is the same. In the end, I would just add to the X and add to the Y to the to let me know about the next step. I have moved one step, so I will add one to the steps and then push that point to the path. And I will continue until this loop ends and in the end, I would just divide the number of steps by two to give me the uh, number of steps that is taking from S to the furthest away point. So this is for part one. For part two, it gets a bit more tricky. So for part two, we need to find out how many points are inside this uh, shape, this path. So for example, this is inside because it's like a shape that we have here. This is the shape that we have here that, yeah, so yeah, this is the shape. So the point that we have here is inside the shape, but this one, for example, is not because there is a way outside the shape for it. So we need to figure out how many of these points are inside this uh, weird shape that we have here. So it gets more complicated because the shape is getting more complicated. But uh, I mean, there is an example here that we can figure out. So how can we come and solve this one? To solve this one, there is a very good article called the ray casting and it's just like this. So for any shape that we have and any point in the space, that point can be inside the shape if we cast a ray from that point in x direction to the right or to the left. And if that ray crosses the path odd times, then that point is inside the shape. If it crosses even times, then it's outside the shape. So let me show it, show you here. So for example, if I have a weird shape like this, and uh, for every point here, so there is a point here, there is a point here, and let's say there is a point here and one here. So now if I cast a ray from this point, for example, to the right, it will never cross the shape, so it's zero and it's outside. If we cast the ray from this point to the left, it will cross here and here, two points, so it's again outside. For this one, it will go one to this direction and one to this direction. 
uh, for this one for example it can be said that it crosses three times one two and three and in this direction it's the same one two three and that's basically like it any point that is inside will need to exit at this point and if it enters it will exit eventually so there will be x number of inter exits which makes it an even number plus a final exit or a beginning exit that makes it odd uh, for the all the points that are outside the shape it will be even because they need to enter and then exit and then enter and then exit so if i have some shape like let's do something like this now if i cast the ray for example here this will get to the path at this point and this is a pipe so we can add one to the crossings here the same goes here but if we are going for example like at this exact ray this is a j basically based on the mappings that we have here so this is a j and uh, here this one is an f so if this and we cast the ray then we need to count it as well because eventually it will pass it can be a fj which means there is a short shape like this or it can be a number of dashes in between so it can be like this but eventually when we cast a ray it will enter as it has entered here right now the same goes here if there is a shape like this a corner like this which is this is a 7 and this is an L the same story will go here so if we cast a ray here we get to a 7 and a bunch of dashes and an L we will need to continue that one count that one as well so let's go and see this part in action in the code so if I open part 2 everything is the same the providing the path is always the same there is only one more thing that I added to the code and that's it, that's part is this initial rays and here I will just provide the array of the length of the input and then here in the for loop that will be added to the part 1 we would count the number of crosses for each ray so if the ray is uh, if the point that we are casting the ray is a pipe add to the crosses and then we would add the crosses again for these two cases that I covered in the shape that I draw and in the end after this for loop is just done sorry if that uh, if that is checking the ray is done we would check for the crosses if it's an even then we don't count and if it's an odd number of crosses then we count that point and at in the end we just log the count so please go and check the code in my github channel if you liked it please provide a comment if you feel like anything is missing or you have a suggestion for the code and in the end thank you for watching and i hope you have enjoyed the video if that's the case, please subscribe to my channel. It will help me a lot in growing the channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.